What's up guys? So for this video I'm going to be talking some more about organic chemistry. So for this one I'm going to be talking about cyclic hydrocarbons, alkenes, and alkynes. So this would correlate with the organic chemistry three notes that I posted up on the teams. So feel free to follow along with that. Though I did skip the first little bit on line structures. That part pretty straightforward and if you have been to the Zoom classes or gone back to see them, you would have seen me talking about them anyways. So I skipped that part. Now I'm actually going to start with the cyclic hydrocarbons. So again, if you have questions, feel free to ask, send me a message or anything. But again, this would be organic chemistry notes three that you can find uh, on the team. So if you do want to get that first and follow along with that, it might help you out here. So first thing, we're going to look at the cyclic hydrocarbons. Okay, so these are called cyclic because they eventually form a ring type structure. Okay, so what I mean by that is, say for example, um, you basically the carbons are going to loop back and connect with each other, like so. Okay, and then the rest would be filled in with hydrogens as they normally are. Okay, and so that would be all the way around the ring. Okay, so cyclic hydrocarbon has only single bonds, it would be called a cycloalkane. So it can technically have more than a single bond. So we could see have, could for example have a double bond and then be called a cycloalkene, but we'll get to a little bit of that more um, when we get to alkenes itself. Okay, so essentially we got a ring of them and they connect and then there's just filled up with the rest being hydrogens. So well, in terms of naming them, cyclic hydrocarbons, they can have other things attached to them. So you may have the main ring, and so that would be our parent chain. Okay. So if there's more than one substituent, it would one of them is always going to start as carbon number one. But we, again, kind of like with naming a regular hydrocarbon, uh, the alkanes, you want to have the lowest possible numbers on them. So where you start is always going to be based upon where the substituents are actually connected to. Okay, And if there's only one, you don't actually have to. It's not wrong to put it in, but you don't necessarily have to write the, the number if there's only one thing attached to it. If you have more than one, then you would be putting it on uh, just to be more clear. Okay, So with the... Uh, <clears throat> Hydro, uh, uh, cyc with the cyclic hydrocarbons, right? We use the prefix cyclo to indicate that it is a ring structure. So any of the basic ones, uh, alkanes, they can form a cyclic structure starting at propane. Okay, ethene is too small to loop around, so that can't be that. Uh, can't have one. So starting at propane, you can have cyclopropane. And so what you may notice here up in the example here is that we have cyclohexane. Okay, Hexane, you should know, is a six carbon structure. Okay, And the other thing that is important here is that we have cyclo. So when you see that, that indicates we got a ring being made. Okay? So just like with the regular alkanes, we can figure out how many carbons there are in the root of the name itself. In this case, like I said, hexane, that's six carbons right here. And so our ring is made up of six carbons in a row. So you, like I said, you can have other things too, like cyclopropane. So that's three carbons. They form a nice little triangle. And then they got hydrogens. This would be cyclopropane. Okay. Or you could have cyclobutane. So butane, four carbons. Okay, and then hydrogens filled in. This would be cyclobutane. And so on and so forth. Cyclooctane, cyclonoinane, all, all things like that. Okay. So let's look at another example here. So feel free to draw this one in. I'm gonna add something right now. So let's Start with a parent here, base. Oops. Okay, that's it. And now let's fill in our hydrogens. Okay. 
And remembering that each carbon has to have four bonds. So when we're looking at a cyclo alkane, we have to first identify the parent, just like with the regular. Okay, that's the most important part. So what you should see is that obviously there is a ring being formed here. This is part of the cyclo alkane examples. So first things first, here's our parent. Okay, our parent is a five carbon ring. So five carbons is generally a pentane, and since it is in a ring shape, this parent would be cyclopentane. Okay. The next thing to look at here is the things that are attached to it. So what you should see is this guy here. It has two carbons, so that would be an ethyl group that's attached. Because remember, two carbons is has the prefix eth. Okay, so that means this would be ethyl cyclopentane. Now again, going back, uh, remember it did say that if there's only one group, we don't really need to worry about naming it. Okay, because regardless uh, of how, how we or of where we would have put it, if there's only one, that's always going to be carbon number one. So whether it would be here or here doesn't really matter. Okay, as long as there's only one group, wherever it's attached instantly makes it carbon number one, so we don't even need to worry about it. Okay, I'm going to erase this and draw one more. Um, whether or not you have space, maybe you can put it down inside, or or you can just kind of look at this one for practice. Let's see what it looks like if there are two substituents attached. So first off, I'll just draw parent. Go with that, and we'll do that, okay, and then fill in the rest. Okay, so first things first is we want to look at our parent, which is here. We got six carbon ring, six seats. So that would be cyclo, actually that's not gonna be enough room for the rest of it. This would be cyclo hexane, okay? Now, in this case, we got two things attached. That would be here and here. Now they're both a single carbon in either case. So this would be methyl groups. Okay? Now because we have two, we do have to number it. Now whether you name either of these as the first carbon doesn't actually matter, but remember keep in, the thing to keep in mind is that we want the lowest possible sum. Okay, So let's just name this one, use a different color actually, we'll name this one carbon one. This guy here is number one. Okay. Now, the other thing too, like again, is just to stress this point, we want the lowest possible. So we're going to go clockwise. Okay. Some people might go this way, and that would be wrong, because in that case, it would be one, two, three, four, five. We don't want that. We want the, again, the lowest possible numbers. So we go clockwise in this instance. So this would then be one, three di methyl because we have two of them cyclohexane all right let's just do one more to make sure erase all this I'm do a much smaller one uh, I'm just gonna draw the whole thing. I know what I want to do in my mind. Now, in this case, we actually have two different groups. Okay, so this actually makes it a little bit messy, um, but we'll start from the very beginning here. Number one, we want the parent chain. So it's a four carbon ring. 
oh, that's a weird looking ring. Uh, so it would be cyclobutane. Okay. Now our substituents in this case are we got an ethyl here and a methyl there. Okay. So in terms of this, it's it's a, little, it's a little bit weird, but generally speaking, we want to go alphabetically as our first carbon. At this level, honestly, if you did it the other way around, I wouldn't be that upset. But typically speaking, you should be going um, in a alphabetical order. So carbon one is going to be the ethyl. Okay, so you would have that. And so in this case, we have one ethyl. 3-methyl cyclobutane. Okay, so that's basically it for these cyclos. Let's move on to the next thing here. So next, we have our alkenes. Okay, so an alkene is a hydrocarbon that has at least one double bond. Now you can have more, but in, in this case, we have a single or more double bonds between carbon atoms. And so the big thing that would change from the alkanes is that the suffix ene is used. So instead of ethane, we would have ethene, or instead of propane, we would be propene. Okay. So the other thing here is that the smallest possible alkene you can have is ethene. Okay. Methane wouldn't have another carbon to bond with, so it's not possible to make a double bond with anything. Um, and so to indicate that there is a double bond, we would just put two lines between the two carbons and have it, kind of like this guy here. Okay, so if we were to do the structure form of the entire thing with every single hydrogen drawn out, we would just have the little two lines there. Or, and the weird one is kind of the line structure, if you'll notice, is just two lines like that. Remembering that the ends there and there are where the carbons are at, and everything else is just going to be a hydrogen. Okay? So, if you remember, there was also a formula for alkanes, and it was the number of carbons. If you multiply by 2 and add 2, we could figure out the formula. There is a similar one that you can use for alkenes, and it's this here. So what that means is that if we had an alkene with, say, 10 carbons, we could figure out the formula. Because in that case, it's just 2 times 10, which is 20. So that means that alkene would be C10H20. Okay, pretty straightforward. I mean, it's almost the same just without the plus two. So not a lot of difference there. Now, naming them, like I said, uh, it's the big difference here is that you have a double bond, and so the suffix then becomes ene. Okay. Now the parent chain. If you have a double bond, uh, must always include the double bond. And you also, just like with the other kind of things before, want the lowest possible numbers. Okay, so we have propene here, where I've just drawn. I didn't even bother with the hydrogens, just because it takes extra work. And you, again, you're just assuming that they are there unless otherwise noted. Okay, so whether you have it flipped or not, written like this. The other option being like this. This is still on carbon number one. You always start numbering from where the group is, the new special thing. In this case, the special thing is the double bond. So whether it was this top one or the bottom one, it would still be the same thing because you have to think the first one is basically just flipped around, spun around. So it makes no difference. But in some cases, that's not going to happen. So with this guy here, we have multiple places where the double bond can be. And that means there's two different ways to name this thing, which is butene, because there's four carbons. In the first scenario, the double bond is right there between carbons 1 and 2. So we would actually call this guy 1-butene. Okay. Whereas in the second option. The double bond is located between carbons 2 and 3, therefore we would name this 2-butene. 
Now it doesn't seem like that makes a big difference, but again, in terms of actually making things, double bond is useful for synthesizing materials, okay? And so if you wanted to add on extra components to this basic molecule, where it would be added on depends upon where the double bond is, okay? So in one butene up here, things can be added to either carbon one or two, which might make a difference. Whereas in this guy, things would be added on to either carbon two or three. And again, not a huge difference, but depending on what you're trying to make, this could be important. Now, sometimes you may have more than two, or sorry, more than one double bond. So in that case, again, the parent chain has to include both of them. And it becomes a little bit weird, but kind of just like when we had multiple methyl groups, we had a di or a tri or whatever to indicate how many there would be. So let's look at an example here where we have two, three, hexadiene. So first thing you want to pay attention to is the how many carbons? So hex. Hex we know is six carbons. Six Cs. And this part here is going to tell us there are two double bonds. And then the last thing that we want to make note of is this part here. Two, three. That means the double bonds are located between carbons two, or are located on carbons two and on carbon three. So what that would mean then, if we were to draw it out, would be, so we want to make a chain of six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So there would be one double bond between carbons two and three. So that would be right here. And the other double bond would be between carbons three and four. So right here, okay? Now again, everything else would be filled with hydrogens. So that. that. This one actually doesn't have any room for any hydrogens. If you look, it's already making four bonds with its surrounding carbon friends, so it has no room for hydrogens. So we'll skip that one. So we got that, that, and then finally, remember, ends typically end with this H3. Okay. So just like alkanes, totally possible to have a branched alkene. Okay. But again, the big difference here is that instead of looking for the longest chain of carbons, the longest consecutive chain of carbons, I mean, we're going to be looking for the double bond, for one, has to be included in the parent, and then the longest chain of carbons you can make with the double bond within it. Okay? So you may actually be able to find a longer chain of carbon within the molecule without the double bond, but we don't want that. Okay? We have to include it. So let's take a nice little example here. So you'll notice if you were to just go by regular alkane rules, you would find the longest chain of carbon is right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Heptene, or heptane, sorry. But in this case, remember, because we have this double bond here, our parent chain has to include it. So that's not actually going to be our parent we have to include that. So our parent chain will actually be this here. So that's actually a chain of one, two, three, four, five carbons. Oops, can't count. One, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So this would be hexene. Okay, and because it's happening on the very first carbon in the chain, this would be one. Hexene. Now the next thing that's important here is the group that's attached to it. Right there. Okay? That is a ethyl group. And it is currently attached oops, to carbon number two. So this would be two ethyl one hexene. Yeah, these Ys. Okay. So not too bad. Here again, the only real difference here is that your parent chain must include the double bond. We don't want the longest chain of carbons strictly on its own. We want the longest chain of carbons that has the double bond. Okay. Now here's another one. Looks a little bit scary with three or four things attached to it. But in this case, 
we're going to start the same way as always, and that is finding the parent. Okay, so our parent is going to be straight across right here. That would be a four carbon, or sorry, eight. Again, can't count. We have eight carbons in a row here, so that would be octene. Make it up here. Not the most space up here. Okay, and the double bond is located right there. That's carbon number three, so we would call this three octene. Okay, the next things we want to look at are the things attached to it. So, what you should see is that we have one carbon there, another there, and another there. So, we have three methyl groups. We also have this other weird thing here, right here. Yeah, highlighter. Doesn't like going up and down, apparently. So we have that. So a three carbon chain, or branch, be called a propyl. So this here, propyl. These other guys, trying to color coordinate here, methyls. And again, we have three of them. So again, going alphabetically, methyl would go first. So there is a methyl attached to carbon number two, carbon number five. So we would write it as such. And I'm going to actually write it up above just because it's going to be a long name here. So you have 255-trimethyl because we have three methyls attached to this. And if you're wondering why we have to write the fives twice, it's because otherwise we don't know where the third one would be located. So we have to be very specific here, very precise as to where it would be found. Okay. The next thing we have is the propyl, and propyl is attached to carbon number four. So it would be 255 trimethyl, and then the dash, four propyl. Oops, spelled it wrong. 4 propyl 3 octene. Okay, so it's a long name, it's a pretty messy name, but again, it's really not that. Again, you're just finding that parent, and then we'll name our branches after, and then we number them off once we have all that. Keeping in mind, alphabetically speaking, the alkyl groups, the chains, or branches go on alphabetically. Okay? Ignoring the fact that there's a tri in front. Okay, it's strictly we're comparing the M to the P, methyl to propyl. So, last thing then is our alkynes. And these are pretty much the exact same thing as an alkene, except instead of a double bond, we have a triple bond. Bad marker to use there. Okay, uh, so again, much like with the alkenes, you can't have an alkyne with only one carbon, it has to triple bond to something. So the smallest alkyne that we can have is ethyne. Another difference you'll notice is that the suffix changes to Y N E. So it would be instead of ethane, it would be ethine. And then in terms of drawing them out, we're essentially just adding a third line to the equation. Okay, here and there. So we got three lines to indicate three pairs of electrons being shared between those carbon atoms. Okay. So just like with the other two, there's also a formula that can be used to figure out how many hydrogens are going to be, or carbons for that matter, and that would be Cn, H, and for the H it would be 2n minus 2. So if I said we had an alkyne with 8 carbons, okay, we could then figure out what the formula would be. So it would just be two, yeah. two times eight minus two. So that's 16 minus two, which is 14. Look at me doing math. So that means our formula would be C8H14. Okay. So that's essentially it for an alkyne. They're more or less following the same rules here. So, like I said, the big thing that's different is that the suffix becomes Y-N-E instead of E-N-E or A-N-E. 
And again, just like with alkenes, the parent chain has to have the triple bond. Okay? It overrides the longest chain. It's more important, that we, and we want to feature that. So just a very quick example, because it's, again, it, it's very similar to the alkenes in terms of how you would go about naming it. Um, here's a five carbon chain, pentine, okay? And it, in this case, the triple bond is located between carbons one and two, so this would be one pentine. In this case here, okay, the triple bond is located between carbon two and three, so that's gonna be two pentine. Now, if we had something like this, Okay, this is actually, even though it looks slightly different, the same thing as this guy. Okay, it's basically, again, it's just flipped around. So these, this would still be 2 pentine, even though we've just flipped it over. I mean, in a sense, again, it, we've just rotated. In this case, we would just start counting from the opposite end. So this is still 2 pentine. So no big difference there. Okay. So that's basically it for the cyclos, alkenes, and alkynes. Um, again, just like with the regular alkanes, the biggest thing is that you can identify the parent. Okay? The only difference here is that instead of looking for the longest chain of carbons, we're looking for those unique groups. So in the case of the cyclics, we have to include the ring. Okay? The parent chain is the ring. That's it. Okay? In terms of alkenes and alkynes, the parent chain is going to be the longest consecutive chain of carbons that you can make that features the double or triple bond. Okay, so it has to be included in those. Um, and then after that, you just name your branches and then you number them off with the lowest sum possible that you can do, just like everything else. Okay, so that's about it, all there is to it. Again, feel free to ask me questions. I'll put up some more practice sheets for you to try out, and then we can go over them next time. But hopefully that makes some sort of sense. And again, contact if you got questions. See ya.